Hey guys, so the GTX 1080 has been out for a while now, and we saw all the big vendors launch their custom versions of the card at Computex. We've got the MSI Gaming X versions of both the 1080 and 1070 here. I actually don't know which one is which right now because they're identical. Uh, but dang it, we have to send them back. We would have loved to have more time with it to put it through its paces, but for now, we're just making a quick video to talk about what these cards improve on over the Founders Edition. We have the reference 1080 here, but not the uh, Founders Edition 1070 yet, but we have this one to keep, so we'll be making more videos with that down the line. Anyways, roll the thing. So for those of you who don't know, the Founders Edition is simply what NVIDIA is calling their reference cards now, and they charge 100 bucks more for them than the regular MSRP. That said, MSI has their own hierarchy of cards, this is the Gaming X, but they'll also have the regular gaming card, no X, which will be missing some of the flashier features of this card, and they'll also have the Gaming Z card, which will be pretty similar to the X, but with higher clocks. And I'm pretty sure they have a bunch of other versions of the uh, 1080 as well, with Arrow is pretty much the Founders Edition, the same thing, so anyways. So let's take a look at the card itself. MSI's Twin Frozer 6 cooler design remains pretty similar to their previous Twin Frozer 5 cards, like this GTX 970 shown for comparison, with some minor aesthetic tweaks to make it even more gaming-y. There's an LED MSI logo on the top that's actually RGB so you can customize its color, and all these little uh, lightning bolt looking doohickeys on the side also light up uh, as in, in red. It uses the Torx Fan 2.0, which looks pretty much the same as the Torx Fan on the 970, but apparently generates 22% more air pressure while reducing noise levels. It also has balls of steel. Yep. Oh, because the, the fan's double ball bearings are steel, so that should have been obvious. There have been some changes to the heatsink as well. The heat pipes now use a square design as they pass under the actual heatsink to provide more direct surface area for heat transfer compared to the previous oval design. Like the Founders Edition, this one also has a metal base plate, nickel plated copper in this case. I definitely wouldn't mind seeing more base plates become standard procedure, not just for cooling, but so I don't feel like I might be screwing up some circuitry on the back when I pick it up. It's also important to note that at 140 millimeters in height, the Gaming X 1080 is around 30 millimeters taller than the Founders edition 1080 so if you have a rig with a smaller form factor pay heed all right time for some performance the gtx 1080 gaming x has a core clock of 1709 megahertz to the vanilla 1080s 1607 and a boost clock of 1848 megahertz to its 1733 megahertz so we should see a modest improvement in fps over the founders edition as i said we had very limited time with this card so i just ran it through unigen valley and heaven against the founders edition 1080 and the top tier card Card from the 900 series, the Titan X. And yeah, the 980 Ti beats the Titan X in some overclock scenarios, but they're pretty close in benchmarks. In Valley, we used the Extreme HD preset at 1080p, and in Heaven, we used the Ultra settings with Extreme Tessellation at 4K. As you can see, both of the 1080s and the 1070 beat the Titan X every time, with MSI's Gaming X 1080 pulling ahead of the Founders Edition in both cases. Now, while the Gaming X is clocked higher, it also has an additional 6-pin power connector, which the Founders Edition does not. This, combined with the Twin Frozer Cooler, will give you a bit more overclocking ability if you do want to do that. Speaking of which, we were able to give our Founders Edition 1080 to a friend of NCXPC, a wizard in the overclocking arts, if you will, and he was able to overclock dual 1080s using a phase change cooler. On the Extreme HD preset in Unigen Valley at 1080p, which is why I also tested the MSI 1080 at that setting. One overclock 1080 got up to 128 FPS with a score of 5,358, while dual 1080s overclocked got up to 196 FPS with a score of 8,216. Whoo doggy! So that gives you an idea of just how much extra juice can be squeezed out of the 1080, although this is definitely an extreme example. But the extra overclocking headroom that MSI's custom cooler affords will definitely help in that regard, if you want to overclock. Well, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. You can click here to watch more videos, follow us on social media over here, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. Now, I gotta pack this guy out. It's been good, buddy. But I gotta put you back in your box. No, it's okay. You'll feel no pain. Good night, sweet prince.